Napoleon Total War, Battle of Waterloo. One of my favourite battles in the Total War franchise. I believe it is also the only battle that lets you play on both sides, as the French attacking and as the British defending. But how historically accurate is it? Welcome to Talk to War Profiled. This series looks into what inspired the developers behind their decisions and as the answer is usually history, we also review its historical accuracy as well in these videos. Let's start off with some background. Napoleon lost his invasion of Russia in 1812, was exiled to Elba, came back and reclaimed France from the Bourbon monarchy. Out of fear that France will return to its height once more, the Seventh Coalition formed against him, involving all these nations here. And this is where the game makes its first mistake. In the intro cutscene, instead it shows a map of what I believe is 1812 to 1813, Napoleon's downfall, not 1815, Battle of Waterloo. My guess is, to save time, they just reused an old map from another campaign and thought maybe no one's done a notice. The two armies of France and Britain were to meet at Waterloo, Belgium. This video will be split into three parts. One, the armies. Two, the geography. Three, some interesting notes and trivia about the battle. Which also appears in game in some way the armies. Napoleon has with him the generals Marshal Ney and de Erlon. Wellington has with him the Earl of Uxbridge in the aim. These are historically accurate for the battle. The British army is described in the description to have been made up of British, Hanoverian, Dutch Belgian and Prussians. The description leaves out the soldiers from Brunswick and Nazu. However, these two are represented in the game, each with their own unit. The amount of troops fielded historically were, as you can see on your screen now, on the left we have the French historical and French in game, and then the same again but on the other side, the British. At the bottom is the infantry to cavalry to cannon ratio. By the way, of course, Total War could not match the same historical numbers, so I will not mark them down there, That's, that would be almost impossible for them. By the way, the British side also would receive 960 Prussians and 4 guns from Prussia. Uh, guns are cannons by the way, which I did not add onto this table as they arrive later as reinforcements. And sometimes I think the battle can be done by the time they do actually arrive. So the infantry starts off in the game as being balanced, and even with the Prussians, the game still does not accurately portray Napoleon's disadvantage as accurately as it probably should. In addition to this, the game gives French cavalry advantage, again inaccurate. The last inaccuracy I can spot is to do with the quantity of the guns. Historically the French had a massive number advantage here, but in game, once you had Prussian reinforcements, it shows the British to have the advantage with the guns. Overall, the unit count comparison is not accurate. Despite getting the numbers wrong though, they have made many interesting details. The presence of the Dragoons, the Black Watch, the Cavalry Lifeguards, not lifeguards as we know them today, uh, but all those units to be on the battle are accurate, and I'm happy to see them as well. The presence of the King's German Legion is also accurate, on the French side, we also have the Old Guard and the Young Guard, and I am sure many more interesting units in their roster. This, I would say, is accurate and certainly makes up for the numbers being incorrect. The numbers, we must remember, can at times be changed for balance to improve gameplay, and I try not to mark them down for that. After taking a look at the uniforms, it may be history-based, but a lot of these look very similar to the film Waterloo. Maybe it's a hundred percent history, but maybe there is also a chance that we got a lot of information from the films, or inspiration from the films. Just because it is easy to do it like that, and uh, games often 
do this with films, like they get the inspiration from it. The geography. Okay, now let's take a look at the map and troop formations. This is Napoleon Total War, and this is the historical version. If we just ignore the troop formations for a second, the geography looks very accurate. Even the roads and buildings are correct. Uh, and I love, by the way, that they actually named the buildings accurately in the game and got their positions right and everything. Even the road in which the Prussians arrived from is accurate in game. On the French side, the layout of the guns is accurate with Napoleon putting a focus on the right side. The French kept the old guard at the back, also accurate. The cavalry being on both flanks, behind is the same as it was historically. You can even see Marshal Ney's cavalry in the middle and slightly closer to the front, ready to charge in. On the British side, we see uh, the, the basic layout. Infantry all in the line and cavalry at the back safe. The extra cavalry unit on the right hand side, or left hand side I guess if you're looking at it from Wellington's point of view, is also a nice little piece of accuracy they're putting there. I, I love how they say it up, I can imagine the developers like spending loads of time paying attention to all the small details with it. Overall, I love the geography of this battle and uh, how accurate the troop uh, positioning is. Yeah, some of you may pick out some smaller details that are either accurate that I missed or super inaccurate, uh, but the devs did a good job and they deserve a lot of praise here with this battle. Now, just some extra information and trivia um, about the battle that appears in the game. These are mostly just small details. For example, if Napoleon loses, the voice actor uh, kind of rages about Wellington. Whereas when Wellington loses, the voice actor for him, he keeps to his expected British poshness and politeness with Bonaparte does war with honour but must be stopped. Like, no, no raging on his side. I just find that to be a nice little touch. The Battle of Waterloo never had its start time recorded. Uh, different sources say different things as to when the battle started. When the battle starts in the game, and I mean once you've listened to the narrator and stuff, and you're actually, okay, you can command now, shots have already been fired out of Papalotte, which will cease after the first one or two rounds. Then the French move their troops and the battle begins. I believe this is a reference to the unknown start time, as when you do start, technically the battle is already underway. Maybe it's nothing, but I think it's a nice touch if it is planned. The French troops have a lot more experience points going into this compared to the British. The French troops have of course experienced more battles marching across most of Europe, whereas the British troops had limited combat experience, only really being able to frequently fight in Iberia. Interestingly, the description and uh, cutscenes go along the lines that if Waterloo is won, then the war will be won and only Wellington remained. However, looking at the size of the coalition up against him, even if Napoleon won at Waterloo, eventually, in my opinion, the nation would have been worn down. Like, Napoleon could have won battle after battle, but I doubt he would have had the manpower to win the war in the end, I think. I think eventually the Seventh Coalition would have won, because they were moving in on all fronts, like, there was so little they could have done. So yeah, I believe the game puts a little bit too much weight on how everything leans on the Battle of Waterloo. If Napoleon won Waterloo, I still think it, it would have been different, but, you know, it still would have ended roughly the same way. Probably with just more deaths, to be honest. The voice actor for Napoleon in the intro description of the battle is getting annoyed at where grouchy is. Grouchy, 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 he says, uh, clearly getting impatient. Grouchy was the one who was sent to uh, pursue the retreating Prussians, as Napoleon feared they would regroup with the British. This has been argued to have been the main factor in Napoleon's defeat. Although, if you want my opinion, I think the battle would have been lost anyway by that point. But that is everything. Overall, Waterloo, I will give 4.5 stars out of 5 for accuracy, which is really good. The only real mistake being the ratios and size comparisons between both sides. 
I know I said I would follow Alexander the Great's battle with the series, but I changed my mind. Um, it would be best, I think, to show the most interesting and not to try to follow some historical order. If anyone knows some super accurate battles or super inaccurate battles that you want me to look into, I'd be happy to do so. If you have enjoyed, please do subscribe or share with someone who you think would be interested. That way I can tell if this series is worthwhile enough for me to do, or if I should focus on something a bit different. I'm also very close to my Patreon goal, just saying. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed, and goodbye.